year, millions of Europeans travel for holiday and for business. But do we give enough thought to the health implications of the trips that we take? Today, we've come to the Institute for Tropical Medicine in Antwerp to find out. There must be have an increase in travel-related illnesses last years, because we have plenty of work and there are many, many more travelers than uh, 10, 20 years before. On the other hand, the number of people coming back with an illness is not increasing that as we should expect when we see the numbers of travelling increasing. The diseases which are preventable by vaccines are only a part of the total spectrum, but they are important diseases. And we think in the first place about the viral hepatitis forms, the hepatitis A and also B, the typhoid fever uh, vaccine. Then we have uh, the basic vaccines, the diseases to which we are all vaccinated as a child. These are not necessarily travel related, but for example, diphtheria, uh, which we were thinking has gone out of the world. Uh, in 93, we were uh, awakened up because of a huge epidemic in the ex-USSR. And then there was a Belgian lady who died in Moscow from diphtheria. So uh, also these kind of diseases, measles is another good example. These are diseases you can catch when you are abroad. And then you have rarer diseases as there are meningococcal meningitis, rabies, Jap encephalitis, the tick-borne encephalitis. And lastly, you have the yellow fever, which is not that frequent, but uh, the vaccination against yellow fever uh, has to do with an international uh, rule uh, from the WHO, and that's regulating a lot of things about uh, the vaccination against yellow fever. I think we must consider hepatitis A one of the most uh, vaccine-preventable diseases what uh, travelers bring home. Well, let me correct myself. When I started working here 25 years ago, there was no month passing or we had a traveler who came back because he was ill or he was already a few weeks in Belgium and then he fell ill because of hepatitis A. Since the implementation of the vaccination against hepatitis A, which we welcomed very, very uh, wholeheartedly, uh, we saw uh, nearly no cases of hepatitis A anymore. But that's one of the diseases that uh, should be one of the most frequent imported diseases preventable by vaccination. And still it is in some populations. You know, we call VFR those people who are coming from another country, living in our country, and then go back to their country of origin, visiting friends and relatives, back to Africa, back to Asia, back to Latin America. And those people often forget that they do not have immunity against hepatitis A. And these are relatively frequent sources of imported cases of hepatitis A, with then secondary cases around the index case. There is one other frequent uh, imported vaccine preventable disease which is not perceived as such. Okay, influenza is wandering around the world, but uh, outside the influenza season here, we know that many travelers can catch influenza in the south eh, or in the tropics where it is circulating more randomly. Um, okay, this is not a vaccination we are advising to all our travelers, but in fact, it is one of the most vaccine preventable infections. Definitely more Europeans are traveling to Asia, Latin America and Africa. You know, in 2000, we estimated about 500,000, 600,000, the number of Belgians traveling to a country where you needed to be vaccinated, for instance, against hepatitis A. At this moment, it has been doubled, at least. On the other hand, we, de we do not see more people coming back ill. We see growing our consultation year after year. But let's be very clear. When we estimate one million Belgians per year who need vaccination eh, for their travel, then 
we, as one of the big travel uh, clinics, together with all the other Belgian travel clinics, we might see between 50,000 and 100,000 people. So, nine travelers in ten do not come necessarily to a travel clinic, but I consult their GP, their general practitioner. But I, I guess that also in the uh, general practitioners see much more travelers asking for advice nowadays than 20 years ago. People should come in advance before they are leaving. And what we are asking is, as a general rule, come about six weeks on the beforehand. Um, one traveler in ten is what we call a last minute traveler. He is leaving within a week or uh, somebody is going to do a, a, a tour of the world and he sees us two, three weeks on the beforehand. Well, for these travelers, those globe trotters who are for months and months traveling throughout the world, we ask them to see us six months on the beforehand. This has to do with the hepatitis B vaccination, for instance. We need enough time to build up the immunological answer, but also vaccination against rabies, Jap encephalitis. So six weeks for the ordinary travelers, six months for the backpackers. But let's be very clear, we are capable to help everybody who is here and will leaving within a few days. There is a huge difference in the disease risks between the different travelers and one of the first uh, distinctions we made is are you going from city to city or are you traveling throughout the rural areas, the jungle areas. Indeed, uh, it uh, influences our advice for a city trip of only a few weeks we rarely advise for instance the vaccination against uh, typhoid fever we do speak about rabies but we do not vaccinate we do not vaccinate against jap encephalitis um, rural travelers or backpackers who are going through the jungle they need much more preparation but there is a paradox in my experience. Those backpackers most of the time are so disciplined that I see them coming back with less diseases than some people who were just for one week or two weeks in, uh, in a big hotel in, in Bangkok or Singapore. So there is always a risk and it depends a little bit on how you behave yourself most of the prevention has to do with the behavior of a traveler. People are all the time asking us, yeah, but what's the risk of your vaccination? And then one of the answers I often use is, when you encounter the microbe in real life, against which I'm going to give you now a vaccine, a vaccine that has only a small part, well then your immunological system needs to open much more uh, of its armentarium to fight against the real virus than against the uh, parts we are injecting. There is some adjuvantia within the vaccine to stimulate your immune system, but the risk for side effects, although not completely zero, is with a factor of at least thousand less than the risk when you have an encounter with the real virus or the real microbe. So these are things that help people to put in perspective the risks. The risk for the local population to suffer from diseases which we are possibly importing, there is a very good historical example as measles was not known in the new world and it was imported. Uh, nowadays there is not that much risk that we coming from the industrialized world are importing diseases to the less industrialized world. But the question anyhow is a good one. Uh, there was not so long ago a publication who showed us that Shigella bacteria, which is a known cause of uh, severe dysenteria. So in the northern uh, globe half we, we have a mild variant and nowadays this mild variant is also circulating in the tropics. So it must have been important someday. But 
normally the, the risk is not that high for us to import diseases toward the less developed countries. Are people aware of the risks when they are going to travel and is there room for improvement? And the answer is definitely uh, yes. Although in Belgium we know from former studies many, many patients are going before their trip or to the GP or to a travel clinic or consult a website. But every day I have people in my cabinet who were not well prepared. So although two-thirds, three-fourths of people are more or less well prepared, there is, only, there is always that small part and young people in general need to learn. So for the coming generations again and again we need to repeat, be prepared, go and see your GP or consult the website of the Institute of Tropical Medicine and go with that information or to the GP or to, to a travel clinic. So we may never stop to remind that message. But as in every country, we have also the anti-vaccine lobby. And there are always physicians who are taking part in that on non-scientific grounds. And I find that very difficult to deal with that. Mm -hmm.